Good morning, good morning, good morning, Bridge Church of Alabama family and friends. Come on in as we begin our worship service today. We're so glad you could be here with us. Come on, get on your feet as we get ready to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, be prepared to lift your hands, to lift your voices, and give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. We give you praise, glory, and honor this morning, oh God. Thank you for waking us up today starting us on our way and for that oh god we will bless your name hallelujah almighty, almighty incredible, incredible amazing, amazing supernatural, supernatural wonderful, wonderful marvelous, marvelous he is he almighty, almighty incredible, incredible Amazing, Amazing. Supernatural. supernatural, wonderful, wonderful. marvelous. marvelous. He is. He is. Give him a shout this morning. Let creation sing for his goodness. Every knee shall bow, every tongue proclaim, giving glory, for he is the Lord over everything. Let all of creation, he is. Hallelujah, how many know he's the king of kings? Let creation sing, for his goodness. Every knee shall bow, every tongue proclaim, giving glory, for he is the Lord over everything. Let all of creation shine, he is almighty, incredible, amazing, supernatural, wonderful, marvelous, he is. Give him a shout this morning. Hallelujah. Let the earth rejoice. Let the earth rejoice with the people. To our Savior. To our Savior and Redeemer we will lift up. He's the Lord of He's Lords. Lord of He's the Lord King of Kings. King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For he is the Lord over everything. Lord over everything. Let all of creation shine. He is. Almighty, Almighty, incredible, incredible amazing, amazing, supernatural, supernatural wonderful, wonderful, marvelous, marvelous he is, he is. Almighty, Almighty, incredible, incredible amazing, amazing, supernatural, supernatural wonderful, wonderful, marvelous, marvelous he is. Incredible, incredible amazing, amazing, supernatural, wonderful, wonderful, marvelous, marvelous he is. Hallelujah, we serve the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the great I am. There is no one greater. He woke us up this morning. Father, we shall thank you. He is. He is. The Prince of Peace, the one I love, the Lord of Lords, He is, He is, He is. Hallelujah, Father, we bless your name this morning, for there is no other God like unto you. Hallelujah, we bless you this morning, thank you. Hallelujah, oh God, great are your blessings, oh God, He is. Hallelujah. He is almighty, incredible, amazing, supernatural, wonderful, marvelous. He is, he is, he is, he is, he is, he is, he is. He is. He is. Father, we bless you this morning. 
for you are great and mighty. Hallelujah. And we want you to arise. Hallelujah. And sit upon the throne of our lives. Take your rightful place, Lord God, as ruler and master over our lives. Father, we give you that place this morning. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father. Hallelujah. How many of you know our God is greatly to be praised? Let the nations of the earth Let the people of the earth Let our living creatures great and small Stand as one, lift one Let the nations of the earth Let the people of the earth Let our living creatures great and small Stand as one, lift one
Father, and we declare that you are the great I am, that I am, that I am. Oh, we can search high and low, oh God. We won't find anyone greater than you. Hallelujah. So be glorified today, oh God. We honor you. be close close to your side so heaven is real and death is a lie I want to hear voices of angels above singing as one singing hallelujah holy holy God almighty the great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, God Almighty, the great I am, you are the great I am, I want to be near you. World and hate in the dark. I want to see dry bones living again, singing as one. I want to hear them singing. The great I am. I want to hear them singing. The great I am. Sing hallelujah. The great I am. I want to hear them singing. No one beside you, Lord. You are God Almighty, yeah. The great I am, that's who you are. You're the great I am, no one beside you, Lord. No one can stand against you. The mountains shake before you. At the very mention of your name. There is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. You are, you are, that's who you are. We give you praise this morning, oh God. There's no one like you, oh God. Hallelujah. The mountains shake before you. At the very mention of your name. There is no power in hell. Or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am.
God, to you be all the glory, honor, and praise. We have gathered today, oh Father, hallelujah, to acknowledge you. We have come and gathered, Father God, to lift you high. And as you be lifted, Father, you will draw all men unto you. We pray, oh God, that souls will be saved today. Minds will be renewed, Father, lives will be changed. All for your glory. We honor you this morning. We thank you, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Bridge Church of Alabama family and friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so grateful that you are here worshiping with us today. We thank you and we pray that you would come back and then, uh, continue to worship with us. We have services every Wednesday at 630 Central Standard Time. We are located here in the downtown area of, Al uh, oh, excuse me, of Opelika in the historic area at 315 Second Avenue. So we uh, would just like to invite you to come back and worship with us. Uh, we want to thank you for tuning in uh, on behalf of the, uh, the Bridge Church of Alabama family and Pastor Terrence Nolan. We pray that you are welcome to be here and that you enjoy our service. Just a couple of announcements. We would like to uh, announce that we will begin our end service, live worship service. Uh, we will begin them on uh, uh, next Sunday. I believe that is Resurrection Sunday. Uh, so you have not seen any kind of sign ups or um, links yet, but that will be coming out this week for you to sign up if you would like to attend the in service worship uh, with us. I just want to let you know that we have done uh, and renovated the building building to con uh, to um, what's the word I want to use accommodate thank you <laughs> to accommodate those who uh, will be coming we have actually installed touchless faucets we also have um, the hand sanitizer stations uh, positioned throughout the building we have masks uh, because you will be required to wear your mask uh, upon entering and during service. Uh, and we have, again, uh, at your disposal, uh, if you would like, we have gloves, we have wipes, disinfectant wipes. Uh, we just want everyone to, to be able to come and to feel free to worship God. We don't want anyone to come uh, afraid of 
of anything. We, we, want, we, have, we don't have to name any names of any specific things, but we want those who to come in fellowship with us to really feel as if the Bridge Church of, of Alabama has done everything that we can to make your, uh, your worship experience one that is carefree. Amen? Uh, and at this time, we will just continue to proceed with the rest of our worship service. And thank you again for being here. Hey, 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 God bless you. Good morning, friends and family, family and friends of the Bridge Church of Alabama. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We thank God for your presence. We thank God that you have decided to join us today. And uh, you, you're at a place where you realize and know already that when you come, Jesus meets you here. What's more important is that uh, we brought Jesus with us, and so we don't have to wait on him to, to show up. Because when we show up, Jesus shows up. And so when you show up, we believe that Jesus is showing up too. Well, we believe that today you're going to receive what it is that the Lord has in store for you today. Uh, just for a moment, I want to encourage you in your giving. Uh, we know that God is a giver. He loves those that give. And the Bible tells us that he loves those that give cheerfully. And so I just want to encourage you in your giving. Let's uh, take uh, an opportunity to look into the word. My wife has already given you the welcome. And so on behalf of the Bridge Church of Alabama, our family here uh, in, in the great city of Opelika, we, we welcome you along with uh, all the other, other people that are, that are here that support us in this ministry. We welcome you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we want to continue to uh, move forward as we, uh, my wife has stated, uh, this coming Sunday, which is Resurrection Sunday, this coming Sunday is... Um, We'll be opening up our doors for the very first time uh, in a very long time. I, I don't even know how long it's been, but I know it's been a very long time. And, and so we're opening up the doors for our members. And so members, get ready. Uh, I don't know if you uh, uh, thought about coming back to church or not. <laughs> but we know that the church lives in you. Uh, but we do want to be able to come in because the Bible does tell us, you know, uh, for us not to forsake the assembly of, of ourselves. And so we want to continue to do that regardless of what technology has given us in terms of us, uh, in terms of us being able to broadcast. We want to be able to um, uh, still, you know, come together in fellowship and have all that uh, we can, you know, come together as one body, as one body of believers. And so we want to be able to do that because we know when we come together, we have an opportunity to encourage one another. And I know that that's one of the reasons why the Bible tells us not to forsake the assembly of ourselves because it has a lot to do with us encouraging one another. And in terms of encouraging, let me also encourage you today to give. Uh, as you know, this is the Bridge Church of Alabama, and this is a place where we do not – uh, we don't twist your arm to give, but we encourage you to give. We believe that you understand that in order for this ministry to go forth, that we, we cannot go forth without your support, your financial support, uh, your time support, uh, your talent support, all those things that God has given you that you lend or that you uh, offer <coughs> to this ministry. It is so very, very important, and, and we never take you 
or you're giving, regardless of what area of that area of regardless of what area that giving is, we don't never want to take that for granted. But we do want to encourage those that that are in you know on the place of deciding whether to give or not. We just want to encourage you to give. We know that because God has placed an assignment on our lives here in this great city. We know that he's going to provide everything that we need, and he does that through your giving, through our giving. I don't want you to think that you're the only one giving. We give as well, so we support the ministry personally as well as collectively. We all support this ministry because we believe in the vision. Where there's vision, God provides provision. And so if you will, turn your Bibles to Luke uh, chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Now, some of you are familiar with this scripture, and... Uh, some, you know, uh, may even say that this scripture has nothing to do with giving, but if it has nothing to do with giving, then why use the word give? So it has all to do with giving. So let's go to Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And the Bible talks, it speaks of this. It says this, it says, give and it will be given to you. I'm in the New King James Version. Uh, it says, uh, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will We'll, uh, running over, uh, I missed a word or two. Let me read from here. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And now let's look at that in the, um, uh, let me see what it says in the Message Bible. In the Message Bible. And it picks up, uh, it picks up, uh, the message Bible is a little bit different, so it picks up a little bit in verse 35. But we're going to pick it up there in the message Bible. It says, give away your life, you'll find life given back, but not merely, moving a little bit too fast. Give away your life, you'll find life given back, but not merely given back, given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way generosity begets generosity. Yes, I love that. It's the way that generosity begets generosity. Uh, is there more to that? Is that, is that it on, the, on 38? That's it. Amen. Uh, it's almost uh, like that, that quote that, that, you, that we have heard so many times, um, that you get what you, you know, uh, uh, that's not the quote I'm looking for. It's a, it's a quote that talks about, um, you, oh, you reap what you sow. You reap what we sow. A lot of times we look at that in a negative connotation, but it does not necessarily mean that always negative. You reap what you sow. We've heard that as a child. Most of us has heard that as a child. You reap what you sow. But that has a positive connotation to it as well, connotation to it as well, where whatever you sow, and this is what the Bible is saying, if you give, then it shall be given back to you. If you, if you operate under the principles of, 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 of the kingdom of God, then he says that he will give back unto you. Give, and it shall be given back to you good measure pressed down shaken together so i just want to encourage you when you're giving today if you those of you that want to continue to support we want to thank you so much for those of you that have already been supporting and i tell you man i wish i can tell you guys there has been just been an outpouring of, of the support that we have had over the last year we thank god for you guys we would not have been able to do what we do in terms of this ministry if it had not been for you all thank god for you and your giving we bless the lord and my wife i tell you this man every time a giving comes in i don't even see who gives i just know that the that the, that the ministry is still operating over all, because of your giving but i know that every offering that's giving every tithe that's giving every uh, a seed that has been placed into this ministry we personally pray over you we pray over your names we pray we lift you up before the lord and we just ask god's blessing upon your lives and that god will continue to not only just sustain you but he would bless you above and beyond all that you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you and we thank god for you and your giving so prepare your giving if you will there's going to be a moment in here a uh, on the screen telling you how you can give and we'll just have a little music to back that up that's the Lord
that plain brother but real soft keep it plain real soft we just want to bless those that gave heavenly father we thank you for those that have sown into this ministry but father we know that as they have sown directly into this ministry they have sown directly as well as indirectly into the kingdom of God we thank you God that you're going to use God every receive that's been sown to build your kingdom up we thank you today God for the givers and we thank you for those that have a heart to give, but God, at this time, God, that they don't have it to give. But we are blessing them as well, God. We're praying, God, that you will open up, God, the possibilities and the opportunities for them to be able to give into your kingdom because their heart is in the right place to give. We thank you for those that are giving today. We ask and we speak a blessing, God, a special blessing over their lives. We pray, Father God, you said that you will bless them that bless us, Father God. You will bless them that bless your righteous people. Now, Father God, we release a blessing upon their lives, Father. Those that have been given, God, those that gave, that gave today and that are given today, we speak a blessing right now over their lives, Father. We thank you, God, for the heart, God, that you have placed in them to give and the mind, God, that they have now, God, to sow into this, this ministry. We bless them and we bless you, Father, for it now. And we pray, God, that you will take this offering, God, that it will go into the kingdom of God and it will manifest, God, everything that's necessary, everything that's needed, God, for this, this ministry to grow. God, that we will affect personally, God, collectively, God, affect the people in this community and throughout this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Bless the Lord. Amen. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and get ready uh, for the word today. We thank God again for all of you that are coming. As we've been uh, stating, we, we have been doing a lot of work here in the facility. Most of you, uh, in terms of our members, have not been here in quite a while. Uh, to see what the, what the, the place have been, you know, what what we've been doing in terms of. Uh, fixing the place up and things like that. So most of you are going to be surprised to come back to your home, your church home, and see what the Lord has done um, uh, through you, amen, through us, what the Lord has done through us, and we thank God for it. Uh, I want to get into the Word. Today you know that uh, most of you may, may be aware that they consider this Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, uh, this is normally the week prior to Resurrection Sunday. Uh, and so uh, I want to begin to, today's word uh, talking somewhat in reference to that. We know that Palm Sunday is the Sunday where Jesus begun uh, or began his triumphant, um, uh, I, I would say, uh, maybe his walk or his, uh, his entrance into Jerusalem as he uh, began his steps toward his crucifixion. And so before we get started, let's let's pray uh, and ask the Lord to bless his word. Well, his word is already blessed. Ask the Lord to bless me as his servant to give the word today. So let's pray. If you don't mind, let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your name today. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you're doing. 
We thank you for the word, that, Father, that you have placed in this servant's bosom today that I may deliver it, Father, uh, with clarity, with uh, clarity of a thought, uh, with boldness. Father, I thank you, God, that when it is delivered, Father, that your people will receive it uh, as a child, Father, would receive uh, receive it as, as simple as it possibly can, God. I thank you that their hearts, the hearts of the receivers, Father, that they are prepared for your word today, and that they will hear your word, Father, and that it will be clear and that uh, there it be no confusion of what they've heard and that you will settle in their hearts your truth today. Your word is true. Your word is the truth, Father. There is no other truth than your word, Father. We stand on your word as the final foundation of our lives. We thank you, God, that you are the author and finisher of our faith today, God. And you said, God, in your word that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, today, God, today we speak your word, Father God, that our faith will be increased. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, here we are again, as I have stated, <clears throat> this is Palm, uh, Palm Sunday, Palm Sunday. And let's um, let me give a little background about Palm Sunday. And if we will. I want to I think I want to begin with some scripture. Let's begin with some scripture here. Uh, let's go to uh, Matthew, chapter 21, Matthew, chapter 21 in the new international version Matthew chapter 21 in the new international version um, yeah we'll begin there amen we'll begin there Matthew chapter 21 verse 1 in the NIV version it says as they approach Jerusalem and came to Beth Bethphage on the Mount of Olives Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right back. Um, Jesus says, I just want to borrow your, your, your donkey. I just want to borrow him. And he says, if anybody says anything to you, just tell him I'm going to bring him right back. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Zechariah. The prophet Zechariah in, in verse 9, chapter 9. And we'll go there after I finish this. But it says, it says say to daughter Zion, see your king come, comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey. And on a colt and fowl of a donkey, the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on them. I want to talk a little bit in reference to this particular text. In fact, let's go to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, because I think it's highly important that we understand that when Jesus operated, Jesus operated out of what was already prophesied that shall happen. So Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 in the NIV version, Zechariah, Zachar, Zachariah, one of those hard words to, to say for me, 9 says, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Resort, rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. And Zion, this tent, Zion is talking about the children of Israel. It's talking about the church. Uh, uh, sometimes we, we, we hear the term, oh, Zion, what's the matter now? Oh, church of the living God, what's the matter? Oh, church of the living God. So when God is talking about Zion, he's talking about his great church. And he's saying, oh, daughter Zion, oh, church, shout, daughter Jerusalem, See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. He says, this is how your, 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 your I'll go back to, to the beginning of that. He says, uh, your king comes to you. Your king comes to you. And so in order for Jesus to demonstrate exactly what the prophecy 
or to fulfill rather the prophecy, he did exactly what was fulfilled. He, 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 he told the disciples, look here, Matthew 21, verse 7. He said, go, go and, 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 and go to the village ahead of you. And at once you will find a donkey tied there with a colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. And then he says, but if anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right back. I, I, I like to take a moment to talk about how the disciples went to grab someone else's property prior to Jesus even going there. Uh, it's not like Jesus had an opportunity to text the owner and say, hey, I'm, I'm coming and I'm going to send two people to come get your donkey. During this time frame, there was no telegram, there was no text, there was no telephone call. But the demonstration shows here the power and the authority that Jesus had even here on the earth. And because it was prophesied that this is what's going to happen, it had to happen that way. Jesus simply said this, that if anybody asks you about why you're taking my donkey, he says, say to them, say to them that uh, uh, the Lord needs them. The Lord has needed them. The Lord has needed them. And the donkeys will be given. The donkey will be given without any question. That goes to lead to it leads to show that there was already a demonstration of of power and a demonstration of purpose already set in motion before Jesus even began to come and walk through Jerusalem. Uh, that this particular week, as we discuss Palm Sunday, this particular week, some people call it the Passion Week. The Passion Week is the Passion Week because it's the Passion Week as as, as, as we read and understand uh, the series of things that take place between now this particular scripture and the time that Jesus is, is, is placed before Pilate and, and, being, and being accused and, 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 and sentenced to die, they call it the Passion, Week, the Passion Week because there's some things that takes place. And one of the things that take place here is how Everything that has to happen according to prophecy begins to happen as it was purposed. They call it Passion Week. I, I want to call it Purpose Week. Purpose Week is Purpose Week because it, it, it sets in motion the purpose why Jesus Christ was sent to the earth. I, I, I sit back sometimes and as I read this particular text, I wonder what would have happened had Jesus decided to do something other than what was prophesied for him to do? And it reminds me of the story of when uh, uh, Peter uh, began to tell Christ after Christ asked him, who do men say that I am? And, and Peter, and in fact, let's go there. I think we can go there. Can we go to, uh, and, 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 and I want you to stick, stay with me because I may, it may sound like I'm going on a bunny trail, but I'm going to piece this together, so I need you to stay with me. Uh, but let's, let's go to, uh, um, I want to go to Matthew. I believe it's Matthew. Matthew chapter, chapter 16. I believe I'm going to Matthew chapter 16, and I'm going to find it over here eventually. It's here. I got it somewhere. Matthew chapter 16. And, uh, uh. Mm. Come on here. It's here somewhere. Matthew chapter 16. And, and Jesus began, it says, uh, well, let me open up the Bible. How about that? Let's open up the Bible because I got so much going on right here. Matthew chapter 16. Uh, beginning with the 13th verse. Matthew chapter 16, begin with the 16th verse. Matthew, I'm sorry, 13th verse. Yes, ma'am. Um, let's, 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 let's go to the New Living Translation. New Living Translation in Matthew chapter 16, uh, verse 13. It says, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that the son of man is? Well, they replied, 
Well, they replied. Now, this is all the disciples replying back to Jesus. Some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. And others say Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, and I love Peter. I, I don't know. Some of you have, you know, maybe you're like me. You have some, some certain uh, characters in the Bible that you kind of like relate to. I love Peter. Peter, Peter just, just, there's just something about Peter. I love Peter. And Peter answered and he says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied in verse 17, you are blessed, Simon, son of John. Because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. And we'll stop right there just for a moment. Now, I want you to, if you can picture in your mind or even picture at this uh, time frame, Peter at this moment being um, uh, uh, at uh, exalted i use the word exalted before the rest of the, the, the disciples for saying something that was just so uh, uh 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 what's the word i'm looking for it was just just it, it, it was almost like peter couldn't believe it himself when it comes out you ever said something and you talk and you speak and you and, and you say some things you're like man i can't believe that even came out my mouth that's profound it was so profound what peter said i believe that even he himself was just surprised at what came out of his mouth but more so surprised of how jesus exalted him before the rest of the disciples and then not only did jesus exalt him but jesus then made a declaration over him and I can imagine Peter at that moment after Jesus got finished talking, how he must have felt. It's almost like, you know, the, 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 your, your, your professor in college uh, 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 pointing you out in front of everybody else because you've done something great. Or, or, or your parents, you know, uh, uh, acknowledging, you know, your great, uh, 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 what was it? Your parents acknowledging something that you've done really well and and and, and you you know you kind of like you, you, your chest kind of sticks out you know you 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 feel kind of proud and you feel good about yourself and and i can kind of see peter at this moment really feeling like above all the rest of them you know feeling really good and i would probably feel the same way here Jesus tells him that you're going to be, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're no longer Peter, but you're, 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 you're uh, uh, I mean, you're no longer, um, he said, that, that Simon, but you're not, you're, you're, you're Peter. You're, you're going to be the rock and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you, the church. The church is going to be built on you. And so we see Peter taking this, that this, had, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, this exaltation. Uh, but let's go a little bit further because I, I, I want to stick to the to what the point I want to make today. Remember, we're talking about Passion Week and, and we're talking about the passion of there was a movie called The Passion of the Christ. Right. Well, this is Passion Week. And I said that 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 today I want to call Passion Week Purpose Week. And so as we talking about Peter here, we see here that Jesus Christ declared a purpose over Peter. But then as Peter began to. Uh, 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 um, I guess really take hold of what was said to him. I think he kind of got the big head. And as we read on, the, the, in, in verse 21, the Bible says this in verse 21 in the same chapter. It says, from then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. 
Now this is this is this is contrary to what Peter had 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 had, had, had believed Christ. Because by this time, now you have to know by this time, the disciples and Peter they're convinced that Jesus Christ has come into this region to become their king. And as the king that Jesus now is going coming in and he's going to establish rulership over the Romans. And he's going basically going to kick the Romans out. The Jesus Christ is going to be the is going to be the king. And then he's going to take over. And, 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 and so Peter is looking at Jesus as, you know, any moment now we're going into Jerusalem and we're going to take over. We're going we to, what they say, kick, uh, uh, kick butts and, and, and they ain't taking no names. We ain't, and we ain't say, hey, look, uh, 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 what they say, uh, uh, and, 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 and we ain't taking no hostages, ain't, ain't taking no survivors. We're we going to get rid of them and Jesus is going to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords here established in this natural region, this earthly region. Is earthly reason, but then Jesus comes back after this exhortation to Peter. He comes back and he begins to tell them that terrible things are going to take place at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the religious law. And he said that I will be killed, but on the third day, he said I'm going to be I'm going to raise from the dead. He said, but I'm going to be killed. But verse 22 says this. But Peter took him aside and began to do what? reprimand him for saying such things <laughs> Peter got such a big head that he felt that he was able to reprimand Jesus for Jesus saying what he said he said he took him to the side and reprimand him and said this heaven forbid Lord he said this will never happen to you Jesus turned to Peter and said get away from me Satan you are a dangerous trap to me you are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. You are seeing things from a human point of view and not from God. For those of you that are familiar with the Bible and familiar with Jesus, as I did some studying, I realized that as Jesus came to the earth, Jesus never, and, and, and you all can correct me now, I, I have not read what Jesus told them that he, had, that he came to the earth to be their earthly king. Jesus never preached that he came to the earth to be their earthly king. He came to the earth to establish the kingdom of God and that he would be the king in the kingdom of God. But there was a, but, but, but the concept because of their natural thinking, Peter's concept or his perception rather was that Jesus came to be the natural king here on the earth. But Jesus never came to be the natural king here on the earth. He came to be the spiritual king here on the earth. Now had Jesus decided to decide to do what Peter thought was what was best for Peter to do and what was best for the reason to do if Jesus had decided to do that the the whole purpose the whole prophecy of Jesus coming would have would have never had taken place but Jesus had to do exactly what was prophesied and because he was doing exactly what was prophesied that he had to he had to uh, 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 rebuke Peter and because what Peter was trying to do was trying to cause Jesus to move from his purpose. Remember now, I said this was purpose week. This is purpose week. The purpose week has a lot to do with what God has, uh, has established that will happen. Now, for those of you that have been tuning in with me for some time now, over the last couple of weeks, I've been stating, I said that we are in a season of transition. That we're coming, uh, uh, we're slowly coming out of this pandemic. And, but I believe that God has done some things that was on purpose over the last several, several uh, uh, months or over the last year or so. God has been doing some things. And I stated that if you were attentive to what God was doing, you knew that God was doing a new thing according to Isaiah chapter 43. We said that, 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 that God is doing a new thing. And because God is doing a new thing, there's a transition taking place now. And in that transition, I believe that everyone that has heard the voice of God is starting to understand that you're walking in purpose. 
that there's that, that, that although this is purpose week, this is passion week, purpose week, that even if you have been hearing the Lord and have been paying attention, that even as Christ came to the earth and established his own established the purpose that God has set forth according to prophecy that even the, this whole, this whole past year, I believe God has spoken some things in your life on purpose. And as you transition, you begin to begin to see some things to take place. Now, this is going to be vitally important that you continue to stick to the course and do exactly what you heard God tell you is going to happen. Now, I know there's some things that God may have spoken into your life and you may think, but this is not, there's no way in this world that this is going to happen. Not me. How this is going to happen. And some of you even sounded like Mary when the angel came to Mary and began to say, uh, you're going to be, you're going to have a child uh, and, 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 and that child is going to come because of the Holy Ghost is going to impress you and you're and, and you're you're some of you are saying but how is this going to happen when I don't know a man how is this going to happen when I have not established the proper education how is this going to happen when I have not established the proper bank account how is this going to establish when there's not these type of relationships that I know that has these type of resources and God is saying to you that if I said it then it shall happen because I am a God and I'm not a man that I shall lie, but if I said it, it shall come to pass. And so God has said some things in your life according to this purpose, according to your purpose. When you think about purpose, I think about purpose as a puzzle. I think about my life as a purpose. As I think about my life and I think about the purpose that God has established in my life, I realize that my purpose is like, it's almost like a puzzle. And every piece of the puzzle has an intricate meaning to the completion of the puzzle. And if God said that this is what's going to happen in your life, then you've got to take hold of that piece of puzzle and start putting it together. God said this. He said that I know the plans that I have for you. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. I know what I've already placed in you. Over this last year, God has spoken some things in your life. Over the last few weeks, over the last few months, I don't know, but I know that I'm not just talking to myself. I'm talking to somebody out there. The, but the Bible says this, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Come on now, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. God has spoken some things and he's going to give you a future. And some of you have been hopeless over this last year. But I'm telling you, God has established some things in your life. And as he begins to put this puzzle together, your puzzle is like your purpose. And every piece is intricate in terms of what God has established in your life. He said that he's going to complete the work that he started in you. That he's going to do some things because it has been prophesied that it shall happen. Jesus had to come into Jerusalem and some people say, why a donkey? Uh, why a donkey? People would think, well, why wasn't it a horse? Why didn't he come on a big horse? Because during, during that time, Roman soldiers rode up on a horse. And see, the, uh, riding up on a horse established uh, uh, rulership and established authority when you ride up on the horse. But he came as a donkey. And he came to describe, based on Zechariah, he came letting them know that, look, I'm not here to establish a kingdom here on this earth in a natural being. I'm going to come and I'm going to show you how I'm going to come. I'm coming humble. I'm going to come. I'm coming slow. And I'm coming and I'm coming. I'm riding on a donkey but I'm doing it because it was prophesied that way the only thing the only the, there's no other reason why Christ rode on a donkey other than the fact it was prophesied that he shall do so hey, come on, if Christ prophesied in your life if God has prophesied in your life and it doesn't even look like it's going to manifest who would think that the king of kings and the lord of lords would come into a region riding on a donkey it doesn't make natural sense does it doesn't make natural sense if I'm gonna be the king of kings man I'm coming with all I'm coming man and I'm gonna be coming with royalty I'm gonna be coming and I'm gonna be bringing my army with me and I'm gonna be coming and I'm gonna establish on the big white horse 
But the Bible tells us he's going to be coming on a big white horse on his second coming. But when he came this first time, he came his first time because he's, his purpose was not to establish the uh, 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 rulership naturally here in the earth. His purpose for coming was to establish that we'd be redeemed back unto him. And so when he came this way, he had to come this way because it was prophesied that he would do so. And by doing so, he came this way. And when, Jesus, when, when Peter uh, began to rebuke Christ and try to deter him from Christ's purpose, Christ had to tell him, you get behind me because I understand what I came here to do. I'm going to tell you this. There are going to be some people that are not going to believe what God has prophesied in your life. There's some things that God spoke to you over this last year. There's some things that you know in your heart. That, that has to happen this year because God has promised it to you and it shall come to pass. But there are going to be people like Peter that may not understand what it is that God has spoken in your life. And they're going to try to they're going to try to come and bring you to the side. The Bible says that that that, uh, uh, that, that Jesus, that Peter took Jesus in verse 22 and in, in, in verse uh, uh, in chapter 16, verse 22. The Bible says, but Peter took him aside and began to reprimand begin to reprimand him for saying such things. There's some things that God spoke in your life that's going to take place and you're going to share them with some people. And those people are going to try to reprimand you and tell you that it's not possible. They're going to try to tell you that there's no way this is going to happen. They're going to begin to ask you how you think this is going to happen. But I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm telling you as the Lord liveth, <laughs> as the Lord liveth, if God said it, it shall come to pass. Because he's not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he has to repent. If God's spoken in your life, I'm telling you, uh, uh, my brothers, my sisters, that we're in a season of transition. God is about to do some things. I was sharing with a brother just the other day that we're in a season now where God had to close the doors of the church. Because he had, to, he, had to, he had to weed out those people that had a heart for him. In order to weed those people out who had a heart for him, it's going to be those same people that were able to stay established and was able to, 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 to be sustained during this, this dry season that we were in. Some people may call it a dry season, but, you know, for us, it really wasn't a dry season. As a matter of fact, it was a season where God began to water some things that needed some watering. We, been, we came with that, that this... this this, this pandemic, it caused us to pray harder. It caused us to seek the Lord for some answers that we were in need of. It caused us to depend on him more, more greatly. So it wasn't a dry season whatsoever. It was, in fact, it was, I, I, I'm grateful for the season that God has brought us through. And I say this and I say that he has brought us through because he has brought us to a place now where now we're transitioning. And those that were able to survive the pandemic, those that were able to last just like the, the prophet, those that were able to go uh, and, and be sustained while this the, the, while this pandemic was going on. The Bible tells us this. He said, not do not be weary and well doing for in due season. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. For those of you that did not faint and believe the word of God, know that, know this. God has something great in store for us and is about to take place. But you cannot be deterred from, from the purpose that God has called you to do. There's some greater things that's about to happen. I'm telling you that there's some things that's about to take place in your lives. The Bible says this, that at the, end, at the, end, on the, the last days, that, that, that the uh, sons and daughters shall prophesy. They said, they said, young men shall dream dreams, oh, and, 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 and we're going to be prophesying, and there's going to be some, so much going on that, 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 that spiritually, so things are going to be taking place spiritually, some things that you have never seen before in your life. Those of you that have been uh, holding on to, your, to, 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 to a book that has been bosom in your heart, and you just don't know when you're supposed to write it, God is releasing you to write that book today. God is releasing you to begin to write that book. For those of you that had a song, on your heart and you didn't know how to trans, uh, uh, tr transpose it to a piece of paper or to some music God is about to open up the door of opportunity today and begin to do some things in your life. I believe that this is going to be a season unlike any season we've ever seen before. Why? Because it's been prophesied that in the last days we're going to see some things we've never seen before and that the saints of God, the Bible says this he said that the day will come when the true worshipers will worship 
the Father in spirit and in truth because this is the type of worship. This is the type of servants. This is the type of people that God is seeking after, those that are going to worship him in spirit and in truth. This is Passion Week, Passion Week. This is Purpose Week. This is the week where we begin to transition. Now, I'm telling you, if you have not heard the voice of the Lord, now's the time to seek God because he's transitioning us into a higher height. We're opening the doors next Sunday. I'm expecting, I'm expecting the, the, the Bridge Church family of Alabama. I'm expecting you guys to show up. And I'm expecting you to praise the Lord like you've never praised him before. I'm expecting you to do some things that you've never done before. Say goodbye to what you used to do. This is, the church is not about this building anymore. The church is about what, what has been deposited in your bosom, what has been deposited in your body, what's a deposit in this temple. The Bible calls this body the temple of the Holy Ghost. And if the, if the, the Holy Ghost that, that's, that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, if it lives in you, then there should be some type of demonstration of that power coming, in, in, uh, 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 co coming through. Uh, and it should be just bursting out right now. I want to see a demonstration of, uh, as, as who was it? Was it Jeremiah? It says, like, fire shut up in my bones. I should see a demonstration of fire shut up in your bones. I want God to be pleased with your worship. Because he has done some things. If God has done some things for you over the last year, and he has prophesied some things, and some things has come to pass, and if you, even if you just made it through, come on, somebody, if you just made it through this year, that's enough to praise him all by yourself. If you just woke up this morning, that's enough to praise him all by, his, by yourself, all by himself. But I just tell you, I just want to encourage you that though know this is Passion Week, this is Purpose Week. Get your, get your mind, get your heart set. Next week, we're going to be, we're going to be, we're, 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 we're going to go a little bit deeper in terms of the purpose of what Christ has, dis, what Christ has done on the cross. But I want, I want you to prepare your hearts. I want you to prepare what God is doing, specifically what God is doing in your life. He came riding into towards Jerusalem. He came riding on a donkey. And that's how they saw him. But he never said that I'm going to be the king here in this region. I'm going to be the king of kings in God's kingdom. And he said, I want, I'm going to bring God's kingdom here on the earth. And then, and then, then you're going to see me established, high and lifted up, established, established. I just want you all to get your hearts together. I want you to get your minds right because we're going to, a, we're not going to be doing church as usual. In fact, we can just throw what, you, what your perception of what church used to be is not going to be the same anymore. I'm, I'm giving, I'm, I'm making a declaration out there. What you call that? Disclaimer. I'm letting the Bridge Church of Alabama know now that there are going to be times you may walk up in here and we just may have a time of prayer. You, you, you don't expect three songs and, and an offering and, and a word. We, we're, gonna be, we're, we're just going to allow the Holy Ghost to have his way up in here. I just believe that this is the time of Pentecost all over again. We're going to have a time where the Holy Spirit will begin to take rulership over the church and the church body. And now we're not going to begin to rule the Holy Ghost, but we're going to have the Holy Ghost be rulership over us. And we're going to be led by his spirit. And those who will, so let them come. <laughs> those who will so let them come I believe that it's time that God be, be, God becomes the priest in this house that God becomes the priest in, this, in, in, your, in your temple God becomes the priest in our home in this temple amen amen amen, amen. I love you guys I just want to encourage you to let you know that whatever God has spoken to your life it shall come to pass but you cannot allow nobody to, to, to deter you from that if he spoke it it shall come to pass this is what God is telling us today. He's doing a new thing. It's a new thing. It's a new thing. It's a new thing. Get used to it. It's a new thing. It's a new thing. It's not, we're not doing things the old way anymore. We're not doing things the old way anymore. We're going to let God, this is God's church. And he said that the gates of hell should not prevail against it. It's not going to prevail against it as long as he's rulership over it. It cannot prevail against it as long as Jesus is rulership over it. Amen. Amen. Look here, let me pray for anybody that's out there that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that you will make a decision today. I want to pray that you will find yourself in a place where you realize that your life could be a lot better if you allow Christ Jesus to be ruler over your life. Uh, 
I wouldn't promote this if it wasn't something that I didn't believe in. But I'm telling you that I have given my life to Jesus Christ. And because I gave my life to Jesus Christ, my life has never been the same again. You can, those, there are many out there that may doubt the power or, or, or the position of who Jesus Christ is. But I want to tell you that because I gave my life to him, it works. It works for me, and my life has never been the same. And in fact, the quality of my life has increased and has gotten better. I've seen my, my life go from, from the projects to the palace. <laughs> Praise God, from the projects to the palace. Kingdom living. When I say palace, I'm talking about kingdom living. God has blessed me in my life. God has blessed me and my family. God has blessed those that come that I come in contact with because I decided to give my life to Christ. So you can doubt him if you want to, but I will tell you just me as a one witness. I'm just one witness out of millions of people that have given their life to Christ. It works. It works. It works. The principles uh, in the Bible that Christ that, that God himself had written, it works. Some may doubt the fact that, well, the Bible was written by man. Yeah, it was written by man so that you can read it naturally. But it was, but it, but, but it was, it was written by men by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Men couldn't write it if, it was, if they were not inspired by the Holy Spirit to write it. That's why it's so effective. If, if it was a man, if this was something that just a man alone was able to do, then the man himself would be able to take credit for it. But no man can take credit for this Bible. No. Everyone who reads this Bible and everyone that's written this Bible, it reflects back to God. It goes back to God and it goes back to what God was able to do because it's so powerful. No other Bible, no other book was able to do or change lives the way the Bible does. No other book is able to do or have been able to do the things that the Bible has been able to do. For those of you who want to give your life to Christ, say this prayer with me. For those of you who want to return back, that you have backslidden, but you want to come back home, you can say this prayer with me as well. It's a prayer of salvation. It's, it's literally just a, a, an establishment of your faith. The Bible says that he has given every person, every man, every, every, everyone a measure of faith. By saying this prayer, you're, you're, you're taking that measure of faith and you're just trusting God with it so that he will give the increase so that he will give the increase say this prayer with me Father God you know my life and you know how I've lived I ask you Father to come into my life and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness I believe in your son his name is Jesus he died for my sins and on the third day he rose again with all power in his hands that power was the power to save me. Thank you, Father, for sending your son. Today, I give my life to you, and I ask you to take full control. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. We celebrate you, those that gave you your life and that returned back to the fold. Thank God for you. We bless you today, guys. We bless you today. We thank God for you. Look, we're, we're, I'm just so excited. I'm excited about what God is about to do in this season that we're going into, this transitional phase that we're going into. I'm excited about it. I believe he's going to do some great things. But I'm excited not because he's going to do great things in my life. I'm excited because I get to see the great things that he's going to do in your life. That's what excites me, man. That's what makes me want to be the best pastor that I can be and the best minister I can be because I get to see what God does in your life. And when I see God manifest those things in your life, I get happy. I get, I get ec ecstatic, man. I get ecstatic just to see what the Lord is doing in your life. Amen. Amen. Look here. Stay, stay encouraged, family. Stay encouraged. We know that God is not finished. He's just beginning. The things that he has called that shall happen in your life, they're about to take place. I love you guys. Look here. I'm Pastor T. I'm here at the Bridge Church. Got my family here. In fact, brother, we, got, we even got uh, 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 our, our PR here, our public relations, and our sound tech here today. Thank God for Brother Carlton on sound today. Man, we thank God for you, brother. We would not have been able to do this today. I tell you, man, thank God for you being here today and the First Lady. But next week, man, we look here. We're expecting to have the whole church family up in here next week. Amen. I love you guys. Look here. Pastor T with the church, the Bridge Church family here. We're loving 
serving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. And we're doing that, guys, however God sends it to us, however he gives it to us, God, whether or not God sends us to you or sends you to us. We just want to do it God's way. Why? Because God's way is the best way. We love you guys. And until the next time, guys, God bless you. I love you. May the blessing of Abraham be upon you. God bless.